Unfortunately, it's very difficult to know without further investigation. Um, I say this because I haven't been able to predict it looking at somebody. Like I've seen people who have lots of subcutaneous fat, but when you look at their liver and look at their visceral fat, they have virtually none. And they tend to be quite metabolically healthy. So maybe aesthetically, they've got too much body fat and there are lots of reasons why they might want that, might not want that, I'm sorry, based on you know excess body weight that just in general is an impediment to movement or you know pain in their knees or joints. Um, but it's not actually causing them harm mm -hmm. physiologically. And this is something that I think just needs to be addressed. And, and again, people that are in their 20s can get away with a lot and it starts to become something you don't get away with in your 40s. There's definitely a genetic component to it, but the truth of the matter is the, the cause of this is, is just fuel partitioning. It's just, it's just where the body is putting excess energy, right? So, so all of the fat we have in our body comes down to where does our body choose to store excess energy? Because that's, that's the only way we store it. We can't store protein, so we can only store, I mean, we store protein technically in muscles, but we're basically storing carbohydrates and fat. So you can store carbohydrates preferably in the muscle and in the liver as glycogen, but that's a very finite source. So most of where you're storing those things is excess glucose gets stored as fat, and then in fat gets stored as fat. Because so, first of all, muscle is more metabolically active. So more metabolically active tissue means higher energy expenditure, which would all things equal mean lower fat. There's no evidence that intermittent fasting produces any benefits above the equivalent amount of caloric restriction. So, you know, whether you're eating in eight hours or six hours or across 12 hours, if the same number of calories are consumed, it's essentially producing the same outcome. right? If your sleep is not good, you are going to be insulin resistant. If you are insulin resistant, you are partitioning fuel in an unfavorable way, which in English means you are more likely to access glucose than access fat, even at low levels of intensity, when you should be accessing fat. So but for many people, once they're exercising that hard, their, their fat oxidation goes to hell and all they're doing is accessing glucose.